Hello everybody, my name is Nolan Phillip. I'm 17 years old and I live in Lexington, South Carolina. I speak seven. I speak English natively and then I also speak French, Russian, Spanish, and Esperanto, Mandarin, Chinese, and then I speak Tokipono. I think it was like third grade I tried to teach myself Russian. To me that was really interesting and I kind of found love with languages that way. I also in fourth grade would learn the, all the numbers in Mandarin so I could write all my math homework in Mandarin. And that's kind of my background languages. I didn't start teaching myself languages until freshman year of high school. So let's get into French. Bonjour à tous, j'ai uh, commencé à apprendre français il y a 6 ou 7 ans. Il y a un an, je suis allé en France pour étudier uh, Étudier le français en un petit ville Angers, ce n'est pas loin, ce n'est pas proche à Paris, mais je suis, j'ai été là pour trois semaines, j'ai étudié le français là, et je pense que après ça, j'ai découvert une passion pour la langue française et j'ai commencé à apprendre les structures grammaires et plus vocabulaire et je pense que maintenant je suis courant en français. Ruski jezik je to prvý jezik, který já učil sebe. Já ja začal učit ruský jezik um, čutně tři roky nazad. Já uh, um, ja začal učit ruský jezik, protože u mě je uh, jez druga z uh, Rusie a já ja chtěl ja um, rozgovorit uh, sana a sám. No, Я очень рада, что я начал, почему русский язык, я думаю, это мой любимый язык, это очень сложно. Плакал много, когда я начал изучать русский язык. Я не делал много, я только играю на Duolingo, и я um, изучил новый uh, слов на следующий год. Я начал изучать русский язык много, и я, я делал много программ для изучать русский язык, и я начал раз, разговаривать русский язык много, и я изучал грамматики много, и я думаю, что сейчас мой русский язык, это не слишком хорошо, но я думаю, что я могу говорить русский язык без много проблем. Я знаю, что у меня есть проблемы с грамматикой и с падежей, Подъезжи это очень сложно для меня, почему я не, я не, понима, я не понимал подъезжи, но сейчас я понимаю, но мне нужно изучать больше на подъезжи, и я знаю, мои, мои грамматики не хорошо, но я, я думаю, что я говорю русский язык чуть не бегло. И когда я говорю русский язык с э, людьми, которые говорят русский язык на свою народный язык. Это я могу говорить без, без много проблем, и они меня понимают, и это хорошо. Я думаю, что русский язык очень красивый, очень прекрасный, очень интересно, и поэтому это мой любимый язык. Мы комментируем Lerni Esperanton, um, charmi vidis video pro Esperanton i Esperanto es um, tre interesa antau i volas diri unu unu jaro kai ses u sep uh, monato. Uh, Mi komencis lerni Esperanton. Esperanto estas tre interes, interesa por, por mi, um, char Esperanto estas lingvo uh, konstru, konstruka. Uh, un, unu viro verkis Esperanto por tuta monda. Esperanto estas um, tre facila. Mi volas lerni uh, lingvo Constructa. Mi volis lerni Esperanton 
um, ĉar Esperanton estas uh, pli populara uh, konstrukta lingvo, mi decidis lerni ĝin. Mi verkis un libro de, de Esperanton um, por, por min, por lerni uh, gramatico kai vocabularo um, sed mi el don el dontis mi libro kai um, mi vendis mi libro i vi povas accetti mi libro mi uh, ponos la ling Lini Gio in la descripto kai uh, vi povas aceti. Acetu. Mi esperanto ne estas tre fluida. Mi povas uh, scribi kai legi kai ausculti esperanto um, tre facile sed Mine, mine uh, parolas esperanto mult, multa um, char mine conas omoe ke parolas esperanto mi pinsas ke tio estas uh, kial esperanto estas uh, dura yeah, that was kind of a disaster. I don't really get to speak Esperanto that often. I don't really know many people who speak it. So it's kind of a struggle for me to speak. And it's also, since when I'm doing this video, I'm recording it all at once. And I don't have a script this video. I have like a list of some notes and things like that, just so I can like know what I'm gonna talk about. But I don't have a script, so I'm just kind of coming off the top of my head, following off like my basic little outline. And it's also kind of complicated whenever I'm read I just finished reading a bunch of other languages, so a lot of times I'd keep, like I kept saying E instead of Kai. So I keep having problems with that just because I'm doing all these languages at once, they're gonna get a little confused. But I really I do read and write Esperanto fairly well. I have some mistakes with some grammar things, but for the most part the grammar is fairly simple. And like I said, I wrote a book about Esperanto. It's I mean it's it's not an official book, but if you'd like to buy it, it, it'll help you learn what you need to do. It's not one of the best. I wrote it, I've only been learning it for a year and a half. I'm, I claim to be fluent with Esperanto in my writing and in my reading just because it's, it's simple for me to read, but when I speak it, I really don't know. I, I'm on the line. If I practice a lot that day, I can speak it a lot better. But like I said today, I really haven't practiced it yet. So this is like my first time today doing it with other languages. It's kind of getting me confused, so. Sorry about that, so I figured I'd just pop in with English to explain it better, so. Now on to Spanish. That's my quinta idioma y yo, yo creo que es uh, la más fácil idioma que yo aprendi, aprendi. Uh, español. Es, uh, yo comencé a aprender español hace siete meses y uh, yo desafié, yo desafié a mí mismo uh, por aprender uh, español en tres meses. Esto es fluida. Um, Después, dos, dos uh, u tres meses. Uh, yo creo que esp español es muy fácil por, por mí porque yo, yo, he, um, yo he aprendido uh, muchas uh, idiomas y uh, la, fran la francés es muy similar a, a um, español y um, Yo vivo en los Estados Unidos, uh, soy estadounidense. Y, um, en los Estados Unidos tenemos muchas um, gente que eres de México, Colombia, Guatemala y otras uh, países que hablan es que hablan español. Y yo puedo practicar español con uh, muchos gente aquí. Yo no quiero de decir todos los días. Yo voy a decir Tres, tres u cuatro tiempos de la semana yo uh, puedo practicar español con gente en la tienda o en un restaurante. Y yo quiero que yo voy a mejorar mi, es, mi español porque tenemos muchos gente aquí. Sí.
si sona ala la uh, wan yan li sitelen e tokipona tokipona yo li, lili mute uh, nimi uh, tokipona li pona tawa mi tokipona li ala pona lukin tan ona yo lili mute nimi uh, kulupu li tokipona li pona uh, li pona li lili tan ona ona li pona mi open kama sona e tokipona tu an tempo si ke pini um, mi wile kama sona e tokipona tan tokipona li pona mi wile lukin sime tokipona li toki yeah that was also a bit of a disaster tokipona only has 120 words and like i said it's was written by a single person just like Esperanto and uh, Sonia Lang, the lady who wrote it, wanted to make it to be very small so it only has 120 and there's a couple extra words that have been added over time. So it's really hard to kind of express like things like this in Tokipona just because of the small vocabulary and having to get like words of different meanings and figuring out which way would work best. So I mean that's why it was kind of hard for me. It, that's one of my biggest struggles is reading Tokipona just because it's Every word has so many different meanings, and I mean, it's, it's very strange to me, but I really just learned it because I wanted to see how the language works, it's like how it worked. Tokipona is a bit, it's a bit different. There's only like 5,000 to 10,000 speakers as well. Uh, Yifan Shui呃我的中国是非常好我上我不知道 uh, yeah, that was also kind of a bit of a disaster, but I did just start learning Mandarin two months ago. I didn't want to write a script for this video because I didn't want to just be copying off that. I wanted to show y'all what my what I actually can do and what my actual language skills are. I didn't want to have like a whole script of things I wouldn't even know like what I was saying. I didn't expect it to be amazing and it, it wasn't, but that's okay. I mean, I'll probably come back and do another video about Mandarin in a, a year or something that and it'll be significantly better because it's a language that I really like that I really have a passion for learning. It's just a lot that goes into it. And I know I've definitely messed up tones and I've definitely messed up sentence structure, but I mean, these kind of things happen, so. Yeah, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I go about learning my languages. I mean, when I first started, like I said, with Russian and French, with French, I just sat in a classroom and listened, which didn't end up that, that I've got problems with that just because you don't end up stimulating your mind you just sit there and listen and you learn the stuff you need to know for the test and then they never talk about it again and you forget it but um, <clears throat> with when I started Russian I did Duolingo and I just said keep doing Duolingo I was like wow look at this I'm learning Russian it, Duolingo never really gave you any grammar 
information. It was just like, I used to, I didn't know how to learn a language really then. I was just like, oh, I just gotta do a little bit here and it'll be great. There's people on the internet who do this and it's so easy, which I don't want anyone to watch this video and think that it's an easy thing because it's not. If you have the motivation to do it, you can. And if you're gonna start, when I started, I was like 14 and it was kind of hard to learn. I had to have to learn the ropes and get to it. And now whenever I started like Mandarin, I knew, well, it was a bit different with Mandarin just because of the thing, but like was Spanish. When I started Spanish, I kind of already had a path. I knew how I would go about doing it. And it worked for me, or at least for European languages. But then I would start, I figured that I would start making flashcards. For a while I was like, oh, it's not gonna help, it's just flashcards. And then I started doing that and they really helped me with my Russian. I would I would make a list, I'd write it down with new vocab words, make a flashcards like stack. I'd learn all those and I'd make another one. And I did that for a while, I started that with Esperanto. Then I um, eventually decided that I would move on to Quizlet and do them online just because like, it could like speak it out to me and I could really take them anywhere. So I was trying doing that, but then I faced the problem of the sets that I first made and mastered, I'd forget all those by the time I made this new one. And I didn't have to go back and relearn all those because that's just taking everything out. So whenever I started learning Mandarin, I was using Quizlet and I, it just was not working. Because I just libraries already knew and it kept giving me those and I was I just wouldn't have a good idea. And then I discovered an app, Anki, which I'll say I right had to spell that right here. Um, and Anki is the, it's spaced repetition, so it's where it, if you you put in a list and it'll give you however many words that you want, and then you tell the app how, how easy each word was, if it was if you failed it, if you did really well, if you kinda knew it, things like that. And the words that you fail, it'll keep giving you again until you master them and the words that you were, like, were always good with from the start it won't give you as often because it knows where to know them and I think that's definitely helped me that's been a big revelation in my language learning and I also get textbooks I have textbooks for all my languages and I use those a lot for grammar purposes and for exercises and then I have grammar drill books that have like conjugate these sentences and I'll do that and then I'll sometimes I'll just come up with it I'll just do I'll rewriting. writing I put my phone in Russian for a while and then I'll like my daily to-do list I'll have in a certain language. Also, it's just being able to speak with people. Like, you need to be able to have people who speak that other language, which is really difficult with Tokipona and Esperanto because there's not really many people who do speak them. So what I do with those, I have like, I'm in like Facebook groups where everyone speaks in it. So I get exposure to it a lot more. But with like French and Spanish and Mandarin and Russian and all those, I know people who speak it and I speak it very often. And another question I get asked a lot is, which language is the hardest and easiest, which I mean there's for a different every person to be different and they and usually you're like my seventh language statistically will be hard will be easier than my second language if they're all the same like difficulty level. But for me I would say my hardest would be Russian just because it was the first one I started teaching myself. So I would say Spanish would be the easiest for me to learn because it is similar to Esperanto and it's similar to French. So it was easy for me to pick up and the pronunciation was very simple, the grammar was very simple. And just to have people around me who help, who are like excited to help me learn that language. Okay, well that's all I have for you today. I know this video kind of went long, and sorry for with a few of the later languages with the trouble speaking and all those kind of things. But I hope you were able to learn kind of what I do to learn languages, and then kind of my journey in each. And I hope maybe this inspires you to learn a language. And like I said, if you want feel so moved to buy my Esperanto textbook, I'll put a link to it in the description of this video right down here. And um, bye, au revoir, bakajis, adios, toki, and zaijian.